So I personally heard about a girl who came out of the closet to her family as a lesbian and everyone rejected her. I mean, the parents rejected her. They completely stopped talking to her. The siblings followed suit. They stopped talking to her. She got rejected by her entire family. And hearing about this, my heart just broke because I feel like I can relate to this on a personal level because I am a straight woman. I am not a lesbian, but I had to come out of the closet to everyone as an intuitive. So as someone who has a difficult truth herself, I feel like I can relate somewhat to the LGBTQ community on some level. So although the title of this video is, did your family reject you for being gay? This is a video for the entire LGBTQ community. I just named it that to keep it simple. Um, but again, my heart goes out to you guys, and this video is really for anybody with a difficult truth because I wanted you guys to know the dynamics of what's really happening regarding your family. Number one, they're going to think you're psycho. You're going to, of course, open yourself up to public opinion. They're going to voice their opinion to your face, and then they're going to talk about you behind your back, which is even worse. They're gonna think you're psycho, you are a pervert, a sexual deviant, there's something wrong with you, and you need shock therapy because you're mentally ill. So you are going to get flooded with their opinion and they're gonna sit there like WTF. That's gonna be their initial reaction is just like, oh, okay, there's something wrong with you. I don't accept you, I am judging you, right? And I think that's one of the reasons why the other side doesn't really care about opinion, all they care about is the truth. So your truth is that you are gay. So the truth is the light. So grab onto that truth and don't let go. But you get caught up in, tw in twisters of opinion. Positive opinion, negative opinion, just twisters. And it's not fair to you <coughs> at all whatsoever. You don't deserve that. And so I think that's why the divine is saying pay attention to the truth itself as opposed to the opinion swirling around it. Actually, it's not really any of your business what people think about you, but of course they're going to make it your business by throwing their opinion in your face. It's, it's going to be like going up in front of the review board, if you will. It's like you're going to be in front of this review board and they're going to be reviewing you and your sexuality. And it's like, well, my sexuality is not really open for dispute or public opinion, so I'm just going to announce my truth and leave it out there. It's like floating in the air like radio waves and you guys can digest that and absorb that and we'll talk later. Whatever, right? Well, the next thing that's going to happen is their ego is going to kick in because they're immediately going to think, oh, how embarrassing for the family. You're bringing shame on us. I'm embarrassed. I can't believe this is happening. I raised you. So they're going to blame me that there's something wrong with you in your head. I raised you wrong. You embarrass me. So now I'm coming from a place of ego, which isn't from the light. Ego doesn't exist in the light. Ego is very much a mortal thing. It's from the dark. And overcoming your ego is actually one of the challenges you guys had to do even in speaking your truth. In speaking this truth, you had to push your ego aside and not care what anybody thinks. So what does that tell you? You're growing as a soul. Congratulations. But your family, unfortunately, are not experiencing soul's growth if they're demonstrating ego. You know, they start to panic. What if this gets out? You know, it's all about them. It's not even about you. They're thinking about friends, neighbors, colleagues, etc. and their opinion. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's like not even about you anymore. It's just about them. Oh, shame to the family. How dare you do that? So what's their knee-jerk reaction to this? I have to control you. I have to put you back in line. How am I going to do that? I'm going to try to control you with emotional manipulation, casting shame at you, judgment. Um, I'm going to remove myself from your life. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'll tell you what. You go heal yourself. You become ungay. You get back in the closet and then we'll talk. And then I'll be your mother again or your father again or your brother or sister again. I'll acknowledge your existence again. If you can just head back in the closet, that would be great. So it's a means of emotional manipulation and control. Now, how else are they going to try to control you? They're going to throw the Bible at you. They're going to claim to be 
super duper religious and they're going to throw the Bible at you and claim that God is on their side. God's in their corner. You are sinning against God. You are going up against God. This is not what the human body was created for. Yada, yada, yada. You are evil. You are taken over by the dark. There's something wrong with you. You are an evil sinner. Go to confession immediately. Go get blessed by a priest. We're going to save you. We're going to try to baptize you. And you know what? We're doing you a favor with all this because we're speaking for the Lord and we're doing you a favor. This is where your family is making a grave error. They do not have God in their corner at all whatsoever because your truth came from God. And I'll get into the whys later in this video, but your truth came directly from God. So your family is sitting there saying, you know, you are, you know, thinking, you're basically saying that they're holding God's hand when they're not. You're holding God's hand. Now, if you're holding God's hand and your family members aren't, what does that mean? It means you are speaking for the light. They are speaking for the dark. Light and dark are constantly battling each other over your soul. <laughs> Those dynamics are constantly battling each other. Angel on one shoulder, the demon on the other. So I have a question for you. You're walking around you know, being open and honest about who you are, your truth, your sexuality, and your family members are trying to push you back in the closet and get you to shut up, what are they doing? They are working for the dark. <laughs> your family members, as much as you love and adore them, are speaking for the dark. They think, they think they're not. They think they're not. They think they're speaking for the for God. Nope. They are doing the total opposite. They are aligned with falsities. They're trying to align you with falsities and not living an authentic life and not being who you truly are. So they're working for the dark. They're going up against God because God is the truth. You voice your truth. God is the truth. God is the light. You're aligned with the light. Family isn't. Family, there's no, there's no bones about it. There's no gray area. It's a black and white issue. There's no gray here. There's no in between. It's either your truth or it isn't. So stand behind it. And be firm. And be confident, knowing that you're holding God's hand, even though you have this crap throwing, you know, being thrown at you. You're still holding God's hand. So trust that and believe in it. Now, here's the issue: when your family aligns themselves with falsities and they speak for the dark, well, the law of attraction kicks in, and they end up attracting darkness to themselves bad things, car accidents, disease, that kind of thing. So unfortunately, yeah, law of attraction kicks in. They end up attracting bad stuff to themselves. And on top of that, the divine has to look at your family and say, hmm, they seem to be really, really concerned about fitting in, you know, fitting in. I wonder what would happen if I put them in their shoes where they didn't necessarily fit in. I wonder what would happen then. Well, they're probably going to be placed in your shoes where they're not going to fit in. They're going to have to overcome their ego, opinion, etc. Because they have to be shown what they're doing wrong. They have to be shown. So maybe they'll have a difficult truth that they have to share with people. This life, the next life, whatever. But what your family just said to the divine was, We have lessons to learn, God! We have lessons to learn! And God is like, okay, no problem. <laughs> That's karma. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, yes, in case you're wondering, your family has bad karma from writing you off. They do. They just do. They told God they need to learn lessons. They gave you the middle finger. They told the universe, hey, I'm closed-minded and judgmental, and I think I'm holding the hand of God when I'm not. So universe, please set me straight. Please set me straight. Please show me the light and the truth. That's the dynamic that's going on. So because light and dark you know, constantly battle each other and they fight over your soul. I just want to make it clear that the dark works through people. <laughs> so the dark is working through your family members. So be careful, be careful because they're going to come from a place of concern and love. They're going, this control that they're going to demonstrate is going to come under the guise of concern and love. I'm worried about you. You know how many times I heard that? Straight jacket Sally here, because I'm psycho for being psychic, right? 
because they don't believe in psychic ability, so I'm psycho. We're worried about you, Christine. We're so concerned. Meanwhile, the divine is like, yeah, you don't have to be concerned about her. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, yeah, you don't have to be concerned about me. And then I compare our lives to each other and I'm like, my life is like so much more together than yours. I can't even believe you think you have to worry about me. <laughs> it's amusing. But the concern and love that they have for you is actually a really gross energy. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because your family is on this pedestal so far above you that they're like looking down on you. You're down here, you're up here, you need their help, they have to save you. So that attitude of we have to rescue you is so based in ego that it doesn't feel like love or care or concern at all whatsoever. It's a really, really gross, gross energy that is completely unflattering. So I, I truly feel for you guys because, you know, they talk about tolerance and acceptance. It's like, no, you're not tolerating me. You're not accepting me. <laughs> you're loving me unconditionally. Stop being such a judgmental jerk on your pedestal above me. It's like, who are you to criticize? So, yeah, it's, it's like... Um, they're just going to try to make you fit in, you know? They're going to baptize you. They're going to heal you and purify you from being gay, you know? Like, you need to be saved. Your soul is lost when it's really the exact opposite. Your soul is not lost at all whatsoever. You're holding God's hand and you're speaking your truth. So, good for you. Uh, another thing that I have to be completely honest with now, with, with you here now, um... If your family stops talking to you, like, you have no control over that. But even if your family, like, maybe they didn't stop talking to you, maybe just every time you get together, you get, like, some sort of speech or whatever, you know, where you're just like, oh, gosh, not this stuff again, you know, where they're just casting shame at your soul. And every time you have an interaction with them, you walk away feeling horrible or like you're doing something wrong or you're a total sinner and you're evil, right? The divine's reaction to these people being your blood relatives is so. Uh, he doesn't care. <laughs> so in the battle of light versus dark, if a blood relative starts speaking for the dark, what does that mean? It means you are no longer an energetic match for them. Because in speaking your truth, you're speaking for the light. And if they're trying to pull you away from that truth, they're speaking for the dark. So if light and dark come together, they're incompatible energies and they need to separate. How do they separate out? Self-love. So if they make the free will decision to cast shame and judgment at you, you make a free will decision based in self-love to say sayonara. Light just separated out from dark. So that's how the two incompatible energies separate out from each other. Someone makes a decision based in self-love. This isn't working for me. This isn't cool. I feel like crap every time I hang out with you. Self-love decision by... And that's how you separate out. Now, decisions based in self-love are always supported by universal energies. So congratulations in doing that. You just triggered the law of attraction in a good way. So, at the risk of sounding completely insensitive and jerky, I'm just going to say it. Write them off. <laughs> Write them off. You don't owe them anything. And I'm talking about guilt-free. If you feel like crap every time you hang out with them, you write them off guilt-free. Because decisions based in self-love are always supported by universal energies. So your soul is going to trigger the law of attraction and you're going to attract love, abundance, peace, serenity, financial abundance, whatever, onto your path. You're going to be a magnet for good things because you told the universe, I love myself and so should you. Self-protection is self-love. You are protecting yourself from crap. You don't deserve it. You don't need it. Write them off. They don't care if they're a blood relative. Write them off. If they're emotionally abusing you, bye bye Guilt-free. Besides, was it really your free will decision to write them off? Not really. It's your free will responding to their free will. Because they have control over themselves. They have free will as to whether they cast shame and judgment at you. This is your free will responding to theirs. So did you really have a choice? Not really. You know, and, and also... You know, I gotta be honest with you, speaking of free will, you know, as somebody who was a closet intuitive for a long time, those years were really harsh. <laughs> really harsh. 
I don't wish that on anybody. So if you are gay, I don't really see you as having much of a choice. You have to come out of the closet because in the dark is where you'll stay if you remain in the closet. The closet is dark. You're in the dark. And you're going to trigger a law of attraction in a bad way because you're not aligned with your truth. You know, you're hiding who you are. You're leading an inauthentic life. So your relationships are going to be inauthentic. Everything is going to be inauthentic because you're not being real. So if you align yourself with the truth and the light and keep your standards high, you have positive relationships that are in alignment with who you are. You can be a member of the LGBTQ community where you're out there and you're supporting others and they're supporting you and it's just love out, love in. It's a fantastic energetic exchange with them. You know, uh, the other side can bring your soulmate onto your path because you're shining authentic light. So they can bring the perfect romantic partner forward for you. So you see what I mean? It's, you know, it's important to, to speak your truth because it affects the other areas of your life as well. So keep that in mind. I mean, you have free will. You can stay in the closet if you want, but you're really hurting yourself if you do. So if you came out to your family and they rejected you, keep going. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep going. Don't back away from your truth because if you back away from truth, you'll let go of the divine's hand because the truth is the light. So do not back away from truth no matter what. <clears throat> Be proud of who you are. You know, show the world who you are and be proud of it. Don't have any fear. Now, another thing is that we are all here to learn lessons, okay? So this is all about soul's growth. And so that's why I was talking earlier in the reading, why is this, sorry, earlier in the video, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why do I have this truth? Why did it come from God? What's the dealio? You're being challenged. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, you're being challenged. Your soul's being challenged. Your soul is growing and evolving as a result of speaking this truth. Think back to the person that you were before you spoke your truth versus the person that you are after speaking your truth. And then you'll see the virtues that you gained. Because as your soul gains virtues, you become a closer energetic match for the God energy itself. So you become considered a higher soul. So you are learning self-love, self-acceptance, self-reliance, authenticity. It's a higher level of existence. Um, you're going to gain reward in other areas of your life, like I was saying. And it's, yeah, kindness towards yourself, self-compassion. You're being shown a lot of stuff, aren't you? You really are being shown a lot of stuff. Does my family have unconditional love for me? Maybe they don't. They're here to learn lessons too. What's your family learning? Unconditional love for others, the importance of setting your ego aside, being considerate, thinking for yourself instead of being a sheep and allowing like, you know, my priest or pastor to tell me what's going on. Your family is learning too. So everybody's learning lessons from this. Everyone's soul is growing and evolving from this. So give them time. And if you have to back away from your family, hopefully it's temporary. Hopefully you guys can come back together and be on the same page. But I think one of the things that bothers me is, you know, when like the family's like, we accept you, you know, we have tolerance, you know, whatever. it's like acceptance and tolerance. It's like, how about like revering the person? Like, how about respecting them for being so brave and, you know, looking at their soul and saying, wow, you know, you have a truth that, you know doesn't necessarily fit everyone else. You know, you have a difficult truth that makes you different from other people, but it's different from other people in a beautiful and special way. So my perspective isn't just like, oh yeah, I accept you. You know, I accept you. I accept our differences. You know, it's like, no, it's like, I respect you guys, man. <laughs> I respect you. I look up to you. I revere you. You're on a soul's path towards self-love. That's the highest virtue, and it's the most difficult virtue. So you know what? I'm not sitting here accepting you. 
I'm sitting here applauding you and I'm saying, you go, you go, you go out there and you speak your truth and you be proud because I'll let you in on a little secret. If you look to the left and you look to the right, chances are you're a higher soul. So it's not about other people. It's not about your family, not about your friends. It's about you. So walk this path and speak your truth with pride. And in the meantime, take care and be well. Thank you.